Hi, everybody. How do you make sure that real deeper learning is taking place or the knowledge or learning was only an illusion, right? I have a PhD in the field of cognitive science, folks. I feel responsible to tell you about these things, to discuss these things with you. The science behind learning and how do you really behaviorally measure whether a deeper understanding is taking place, right? Because it's just a mental game. You don't exactly see what's going on inside the brain. So we are relying on verbal explanations and moves on the board. So today we will discuss deeply what constitutes a real deeper learning. It's wide to play in this position, folks, by the way. When I'm digging into the science of learning, you can try to create a plan for why, because that will be interesting for today's episode. All right? Well, the key is to answer the why question. If you really have a deeper understanding in a domain, then you should be able to answer the why question. I'm playing like this because I want to do this, achieve this and that. Because once you identify that why question properly, you can apply it to analogous tasks. You can apply it to positions that show some similarity, some deeper similarity, right? This is the key lesson, for example, for this episode. In this position, White looks at the king on g8. White looks at his king on b1 and understands that this position is totally about pawn storm, opening up lines on the opposite flanks and try to mate the enemy king the first. Thus, White goes g4, yes, because he's using the h6 pawn as the hook pawn to open up lines on the king's side. This is why this is a very strong plan for White, and the why question is the most important for today's discussion. I'm pushing g4 because I want to play g5, open up lines, and win. And if Black obliges, look how easy White will give mate on the king's side, right? Check this out. Queen h2, and the mate cannot be prevented. Beautiful! Right? So when you analyze games like this, you have to look and answer the why question to show true understanding because only then you can apply it to other positions, folks. Because now I will show you exactly a similar position to this one. It's a beautiful position. And again, take a step back and please tell me what white should play in this position. Take your time. Well... I hope you found the best move, g3 in this position. Why? Because white's goal in this position is to open up lines, right, on the king side. Now you start seeing analogies and similarities between the first position and this position, right? Yes, it's the similar similarities is this. The kings have cast on opposite flanks. So the underlying the main strategy is the same. So your question is: okay, how can I open up lines on the king side? And only if you ask yourself this question, you will see, ah, I, will sh I should play g3 because I'm using that h4 pawn as a hook pawn to open up the g file for my pieces. Look at the beauty of this logic, right? But in the actual game, can you guess what white player did? Oh my god, he goes g4 because he says, hey, you know, that's a pawn storm looking position and I want to go g4 because they usually go g4 in those positions. You see, his knowledge is isolated. He's not really answering the why question. He's only focusing on the surface similarities between two positions. And this is the key difference. When the learning is shallow, when the learning is not deep, then people focus on the surface structures or surface similarities between different positions. Remember the first position of today's lesson? It was this. And the best move for white was g4. Why? Because I want to contribute g5, right? So white only sees the surface similarities between this position and this position. And that's exactly why he calls g4. I hope my point is clear, folks, right? Look at the beauty of this. There's tremendous potential here for us to understand of what to avoid, for example, because this is present in so many different domains. In the openings, for example, right? People say, hey, I've seen this idea somewhere. They usually go like this before. I want to play before in this position, right? See, he's not answering the why question. He's only focusing on the shallow similarities. But we want to engage in deeper learning so we can apply it flexibly to different structures and domains. And the why question is always the key because by going G3, I'm opening up 
the G file for my rook, right? Check this out. I want to double up my rooks and white achieves a crashing advantage. Look at the beautiful connection between this position and the first position when you could go G3, folks. Another instructive series of positions, folks, for today's episode. Imagine in this position, black goes B3. I want you to take a step back, stop the video and find the best continuation for white by asking yourself these why questions. What is my goal? Why am I tr trying to achieve in this position? Congratulations if you again spotted that this is totally a crazy pawn storm position. So to secure your king's safety, which is the most important thing here, that you want to generally keep the queen side closed as white, right? So my goal is to keep the queen side closed. So I'm looking for such moves that are actually giving me that. And once you answer this question, you'll find this little short sequence and white keeps everything closed on the queen side and the king is safe. Right, because the C file is closed, the A file is closed, the B file is closed, and white achieves the goal from this position. Right? So I can explain these moves to you using logic and the why question, the reasoning behind these moves. And now I will show you one more position that looks kind of similar to this one. In this position, white goes B6. And again, you're playing with the black pieces. Can you please tell me the best sequence for black? And try to use the why question. Try to go a little bit deeper. Don't only focus on the surface structures, but try to set your goal properly and tell me how should black react to this. Congratulations if you found CB, AB, and A6, right? This was the same goal because I want to keep everything closed on the queen side and secure my king this way. Congratulations if you found the move using your logic and reasoning rather than focusing only on the surface similarity to the last position. Remember the last position? I will show you again very quickly, right? It's almost identical. And if the learning is only shallow, people see a game like this, for example, oh, they usually react like this. That's the, that's the best thing to do without answering the why question, right? In this case, it was the same solution, right? The solution was the same, but it's totally about the white's pieces on the queen side that you want to close up, right? And secure your king. And now we are coming to an interesting position, folks. Imagine in this position, white goes b6. And can you tell me how should black react here? Oh, that's beautiful, right? Yes, congratulations. If you focus on the deeper structure, ask yourself good questions and found 8xb followed by c6. Why? Because currently the white rooks are on the c and the b file and this is the way to secure your king on c8. Because, because folks, if you react like before, if you only rely on your memorization, shallow understanding and repeat what you just done so far, then white obviously will go c3 and your king will suffer in the long run. And there are even some crazy variations like this that white obtains a beautiful position by an attack on the queen side. Every single piece is coming there and you should be very, very, very careful as black to defend your king. Going back after b6, the solution was to answer the why question. What is my goal and why am I playing like this? If you explain this to yourself, the reasoning behind this variation for black, right? I'm playing like this because I want to close down the enemy rooks and secure my king, then yes, you are on the right step. This means you can actually apply what you learned positionally, strategically from the first position to different domains, different structures, different positions, because in chess, right, you will get different positions each time. So you need to have this conceptual understanding, mental flexibility to, a, to be able to apply what you learned to different domains that are showing deeper analogies, right? Can you see the analogy between this position, right? And the first position. It's a different location of the rooks, but deeper analogy is the same, right? In both positions, they want to open up lines against your king, and in both occasions, you want to keep it closed, right? Let's sum up what we've seen in today's episode, folks. 
when we talk about transfer we talk about the skill to apply what you learned in one situation to a different but related situation and you need to see right those relatedness those deeper similarities about the surface differences right this really shows us a deeper learning is taking place and you can apply your knowledge to different structures for this of course you need to be able to recognize the similarities and differences between positions and you need to identify and answer the why question right that's the key question in all the positions i show you today you were relying on the why question because if, because if you really can answer that question properly you can apply it you can have great problem solving skills in other domains right in other positions so that's the function of our training that's why for example a coach is useful because the coach can ask you to explain why you made that move right it's called epistemic feedback the coach is giving you epistemic feedback which means i'm asking you to answer the whys behind your moves because only then right that you can have this deeper understanding of chess strategy and even the openings by the way you can apply it to this yeah even the openings i've seen so many students they just blindly make moves right because they memorize some lines and the moment the opponent deviates they don't know exactly what to do because they were not engaged in this deeper understanding of the opening structures and typical plans right just notice how effective this could be for our chess training. So use this as a guide to understand whether you really learned something in chess or whether your learning was illusionary because there's also the concept, right, of the illusion of learning, right? Because you cannot measure exactly what's going on in your mind. So you can read some books, texts, articles, games. You might feel that you're learning something, right? But in fact, it's only an illusion. You cannot apply, you cannot transfer what you learned to different positions, different structures that show deeper similarities, right? Focus on these things first. Why questions is very important. And please tell me, folks, whether I should continue this episode with more positions. I can even turn this into a series. Shall we create a new series on deeper learning or deeper chess or deep transfer series that I can also show you and test you with those positions that show deeper similarities and you need to understand you need to apply your newly acquired knowledge by answering the why questions give me feedback on YouTube if you like this video folks please send me give me a like and follow me on YouTube so we can reach more people and you can check out my chessable courses on the same team i have one upcoming course about this it's actually closely connected to this it's a, it's about material quality and time in chess and again we deeply engage in those why questions to understand the deeper similarities between different positions that you can apply it to different domains thank you so much and i will catch you on the next episode bye bye folks